Good evening, my name is Kacper Paradowski and you're watching Poland Daily News. 38 years ago, the communist authorities of the People's Republic of Poland, which was an armed criminal group headed by General Wojciech Jaruzelski, introduced martial law in Poland. Its direct effect was the death of over 100 people, internment, imprisonment and repression of tens of thousands and the unwanted immigration of hundreds of thousands of others. Those who introduced martial law were never held accountable for their act. Martial law was an attempt at the ultimate enslavement of Poles, pushing our society and nation off the road to freedom. An attempt to tie a noose around our nation's neck, tighten the chains we have been bound with since 1945, despite all the often bloody attempts to free Poland. It didn't work out. This martial law was another tragic example of this, an example of how tragic our fall was after World War II. On December 13, 1981, in the morning, General Wojciech Jaruzelski announced the formation of the Military Council for National Salvation and the imposition of martial law on the territory of the entire country by decree of the Council of State. That day, nothing was broadcast on television except Jaruzelski's loop speech. As columnists say, it was a time of darkness that stopped the development of Poland. Martial law took us at least a few years back in terms of economic development. It pushed us to such a margin for a few years. They wanted to rob us of one more thing, our soul. But this fighting spirit survived and now we have an independent and free Poland. The perpetrators of martial law were never held accountable for their actions. It resulted from the logic of the roundtable talks, as well as from the fact that part of the opposition were morally questionable. As the late General Kiszczak said, if he had made public all the papers from the closet that he had, more than one halo would have fallen off some politicians' heads. That is the reason why it never happened. Martial law was suspended on December 31, 1982 and lifted on July 22, 1983. In total, more than 10,000 activists associated with Solidarity were interned at that time and about 40 people lost their lives, including nine miners from the Vujek mine during the pacification of the strike. After last night's negotiations during the European Council meeting in Brussels, Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki announced that Poland was excused from the EU mechanism of achieving climate neutrality by the year 2050. It was agreed that Poland will implement this goal at its own pace due to the profile of Poland's economy. According to the Polish Prime Minister, this exception does not exclude Poland from receiving funds from the so-called Just Transition Fund. Aleksandra Zarzycka reports from Brussels. The negotiations were long and difficult, but the result was a success, as members of Polish delegation to Brussels say. Poland was excused from following the EU roadmap of reaching the European Green Deal, which means that Poland would transform its energy sources gradually at its own pace. The Polish Prime Minister also announced that Poland, along with the Czech Republic, has the right to build nuclear power plan, to which the opposition was registered by Germany. An agreement was reached to return to detailed negotiations in June 2020. In the next six months, the European Council will focus on the details of spending of the Just Transition Fund. What we were able to achieve in Last night's negotiations will help the quality of life of every family in Poland. This is because the changes of energy sources in order to reach the 2050 EU goals would have to take into account our specific conditions in Poland, adjusted to our abilities, to the Polish needs. We got that deal, and as a result Poland was excused from reaching the goal of climate neutrality by 2050. The second subject is the Eurozone. What is important here is that the support instruments to the economies of the Eurozone have their mirror instruments for those countries not in the Eurozone. That way, there is no risk of different treatment as far as financial help is concerned. That was important for us. After the British elections, it seems that the date of Brexit finally became clear and the deadline of January 31st, 2020 is going to be reached. Zostanie zachowana. 
A storm broke out after the submission by the law and justice of a draft bill on the structure of common courts. The opposition calls it a repressive act. According to politicians of the opposition, the project violates the Polish constitution. According to politicians of the ruling party, the bill is completely constitutional and the hysteria around it is intended only to fuel political conflict. Introduced in the middle of the night on the day of the anniversary of imposing martial law, special law is a disgrace that breaks the judges' backbones. Every judge who will wear the uniform of the Law and Justice Party will be condemned and held to account. This law can be adopted because of one reason. It is unconstitutional. It interferes with the independence of judges and prohibits them from making a ruling on the basis of the Constitution. The Constitution is the highest act in the light of the law. It is judges' duty to respect the Constitution. The actions that were taken are based on the Constitution in accordance with the Polish law. The judges are not here to take care of politics. The success of the Conservative Party, led by Boris Boris Johnson in yesterday's UK general election is a historic one. The Tories obtained 365 out of 650 seats in the House of Commons, which is the best result of the party since Margaret Thatcher was in office. The obtained majority allows the Conservatives to rule independently and thus close the Brexit case. The election brought a defeat to the Labour Party, which won only 203 seats. This is the party's worst result of over 80 years which led to the leader, Jeremy Corbyn, to announce his resignation. Thank you all, thank you all very much for coming. Well, my friends, good morning, everybody, my friends. Well, we did it. We did it. We pulled it off, didn't we? We pulled it off. We, we broke the deadlock, we ended the gridlock, we smashed the roadblock, and in this glorious, <laughs> glorious pre-breakfast moment, before a new dawn rises on a new day, and a new government. I want, first of all, to pay tribute to good colleagues who lost their seats through no fault of their own in the, in the elections that just gone by. And I, of course, want to congratulate absolutely everybody involved in securing the biggest Conservative majority since the 1980s. Obviously very sad at the result we've achieved and very sad at those colleagues that um, lost their seats in the election and very sad for many people in this country who will now have a government that is uh, continuing policies of austerity and many of the poorest communities I think will suffer very badly from the economic strategy that I suspect the Prime Minister will take forward. I just really hope it puts it all to bed and with such a massive majority just, just get on with it. We're a great country and I really believe we can do stuff on our own and I'm a very positive person. I just hate wallowing in the past. It's done, crack on and let's, let's be really good. I think we can be a great country. He needs to step down. I mean, there's no way that he can hang on. And I think, actually, there needs to be a lot of internal sort of, yeah, focus on what's happened, not only with the policy direction, but unfortunately, I'm moderate Labour, always have been, all my family are. But I just think uh, that's been lost. Uh, the, the hard left has sort of overtaken Labour. That is all for tonight. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for Poland Daily Business. Good night. Hello and welcome to Poland Daily Weather. The forecast for tonight calls for showers in Gdańsk and Sleet in Szczecin. The rest of the country can expect cloudy and partly cloudy skies. The temperatures will vary from minus one degree to three degrees. Tomorrow will be a very rainy day in Poland. We can expect showers on the western coast with sleet in the cities of Koszalin and Poznań, as well as on the eastern coast in Lublin and Rzeszów. Olsztyn will see cloudy skies, while the rest of the country can expect partly cloudy skies. It will be a fairly cool day, with the temperatures varying from 3 to 6 degrees. The next three days will bring more rain and sleet to Poland, but by Tuesday we can expect the weather to clear up, and we will see cloudy skies in, in the northwest and partly cloudy skies in the rest of the country. That is all for now. I thank you for joining us and I invite you to stay with us for Poland Daily Business.
Well, on Daily Business Edition, uh, tonight we will talk about Polish-Ukrainian energy deal or energy deals, uh, because the Polish press, at least the business press, was very much concerned about the uh, agreement signed between Państwowe Górnictwo Naftowe i Gazownictwo, Polish Gas Mining Company and Ukraine uh, Ukrainian energy resources of Ukraine. The deal concerns prospecting the gas in Western Ukraine. Why this is important? Why should we bother? Jerzy Bielewicz, uh, Gazeta Bankowa writer and financial analyst. Sir, please answer this question if you can. Good evening. Uh, it's a strategic move and it's follow up to uh, international accord between the United States Ukraine and Poland to work together in energy sector. Uh, so it's a follow up, uh, I would say. Uh, and it's not that agreement only was signed on December, on uh, September 1st, when we had the remembering of the outbreak of the Second World War here in Warsaw, Gdańsk, and other locations in Poland. Yes, and it's uh, uh, it's very obvious. Uh, the, the the meaning of the uh, of this agreement is very obvious if we consider geopolitical tension between uh, Soviet, uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine uh, and negotiation uh, concerning gas deliveries from Russia to Ukraine. Because if we, we think we, about we Nord Stream just, just a moment. We have, to, we have to say that Russia is weaponizing its energy resources and deliveries. So we've been exactly. part of that. Poland just declined to continue the very unfavorable deal signed in 2010. Uh, and this is just another step of the same mosaic. So yeah, we have to tell tell the story a little bit further. Uh, Russia and Germany build this Nord Stream 2. Poland builds Baltic pipe uh, uh, to bring uh, gas from uh, Norway through Denmark and uh, through Baltic Sea uh, to Poland. And uh, uh, we sign an agreement. Uh, it was three-party agreement, as I said between the United States, Ukraine and Poland, that we would deliver six uh, billion metric uh, uh, ton of gas to Ukraine. To, but, yeah, exactly. Uh, th th this and is, again, from the point of view of the United States, is the opening of the market that potentially has 80 million people in it and can uh, kind of purchase a significant amount of gas. And the, the, but the, on the, the other side that loses is Russia, because they are losing their market here. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Poland uh, sources quite a bit of gas uh, from internal uh, resources. And uh, uh, there is this Przemysl region close to Ukrainian border, which is uh, uh, rich on, uh, in gas deposit. Natural gas and you deposit. are trying to say that this and field, right now, gas field, moves forward uh, yeah, eastwards and, from the Polish uh, eastern and border. And on the Ukraine side, uh, there was no exploration of gas, and Ukraine uh, has a very huge storage capacity as well for gas, and uh, we can uh, storage our gas uh, in the storage facility, Ukrainian storage facility. And by the way, it uh, would be supported by the United States agencies because they would guarantee security of uh, uh, the storage. Uh, uh, so uh, exactly the same as in September 1st. There are three parties to this. Uh, and uh, it's all about energy sector, uh, geopolitical tensions and uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, gas market. Uh, by the way, uh, Ukraine uh, got uh, a big loan, 2.5 uh, billion uh, euros for uh, International Monetary Fund recently. Um, so uh, international uh, financial sector supports Ukraine. Uh, and uh, this uh, agreement between Polish and uh, Ukrainian 
gas companies. It's another sign of cooperation. So very good, very good sign. We will see how it will develop and we fingers crossed that uh, it will work on the benefit of both or, or all three interested and parties. It's, uh, yeah, it's a good example, for example, for Belarus, uh, uh, which is pressed by, by Krem and Moscow and Putin uh, to uh, close yeah. And again, the, the, with the energy weapon is here used in very uh, purposeful way by uh, the Kremlin uh, hawks, so to speak. So here you are. It's uh, big politics uh, and uh, Polish uh, companies and Ukrainian co companies trying to make it through these tensions. Our viewers can be sure that we will definitely follow that story. Jerzy Bielewicz, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that was it for Poland Daily tonight. Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily Business Weather. The forecast for tomorrow will bring a fairly rainy day to Poland. We can expect showers on the western coast with sleet in the cities of Koszalin and Poznań, as well as on the eastern coast in Lublin and Rzeszów. Olsztyn will see cloudy skies, while the rest of the country can expect partly cloudy skies. It will be a fairly cool day, with the temperatures varying from 3 to 6 degrees. In Europe, we can expect showers in the central regions of the continent and in Dublin. We can also expect sleet in Warsaw and Oslo. The Far East will see cloudy skies, and the rest of the continent can expect partly cloudy skies. The warmest spot on the map will be Athens at 17 degrees, while the coldest will be Moscow at 1 degree below zero. And that is all for now. I thank you for joining us, and I wish you all a very pleasant evening. Good day everyone, my name is Maria Kondzielska and welcome to Poland Daily Culture. In this series of programs I'll be talking to Michał Laszczkowski, the head of Cultural Heritage Foundation in Poland. If not for Michał, many great pieces of architecture would be still in pieces, if not gone forever. Michał, thank you for finding time to be with us. Thank you for the invitation. But before we start the interview, let's see some shots of his actions. Michał, you are the head of Polish Cultural Heritage Foundation, which, may, which organizes a lot of restoration projects all over Poland, but not only. And basically you initiated it all from the very beginning. How did it all start? Well, it started during my uh, academic studies. I used to be a member of the uh, student fraternity, which was established in Riga, in, uh, in Latvia, the technical university in the 19th century. So when I visited uh, Riga for the first time, I went to the university building and uh, there was, I found a, a punishment cell, a, a small room where uh, the director of the uh, technical university was allowed to punish students, taking them into the kind of prison. They were sitting there since uh, at, least tw uh, at least two weeks, not less than 12 hours, and they, were, they put plenty of drawings on the walls of this, of this, of this uh, small uh, room. Uh, the Poles, it were, there was something about 25% of students were Polish, but the drawings are mainly uh, made by Polish hands. So we decided to, to, to start doing something to renovate it. We established a student association which 
help us to, to possess some money from the, from the Ministry of Culture and National Heritage of Poland. And it was our first project. After four years, we renovated all the, all the drawings there. There was a large celebration with the Polish president who opened this uh, punishment cell, this carcer, uh, after, after the renovation. And uh, in between, we started to, uh, to, to, to visit other states, other places connected to Polish culture, started to organize restoration walks. But this one was the first, was kind of tricky, uh, tricky idea to organize a, a special uh, Polish place in Riga because they, they, there were plenty of Poles in the 19th century, but there are not many, uh, many places uh, where we can show Polish existence in Riga. Right now it is. The Polish Pansel is, uh, is, is a place where Polish ambassador always invites his guests to show how Polish people were active in Riga in the 19th century. Absolutely amazing, then, to be honest. And how it later developed into something, because you know, right now are doing projects in lots of countries, not only in the eastern borders, so Ukraine, Belarus, but also in France. Or in yes, yes, Polish culture, uh, Polish history is very complicated. Uh, the borders have been moved. Uh, the people has been uh, deported from the from the from the eastern uh, eastern lands. Uh, some people had to emigrate in 19th century. That's why, if we think about Polish culture as a, as, a, as a one Polish culture, it consists of the things, we, the, the monuments we left on the eastern uh, 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 behind the eastern eastern border, but also uh, the things that were done by Polish immigrants in the in the western lands. That's why we are uh, we are uh, trying to to find the tombstones of the important Polish immigrants in the, in France and in Italy, uh, but also. We are uh, protecting cemeteries and churches and other, other monuments in the, in the eastern parts of, uh, of our continent. Uh, we think about the heritage as about the common uh, Central, Europe, uh, Central Eastern European culture, because all the nations that are today having its own independent uh, states are used to be in one state, the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, and it's our common culture here in Central Eastern Europe. Amazing, to be honest. And tell Tell me, please, how your foundation works right now, because as I understand, it started as a student's project, but it, developed something as a as an institution already. Well, it started in 2012. Yes, we established it with my friend from from student fraternity, and uh, the first projects were were quite small. It was uh, one or two projects each year. Right, right now, it's more than 20 projects in year, each year in uh, five uh, in five countries. So right now we are working mostly in Ukraine. Uh, most of our projects are, are taking place in Ukraine, in Lwów, in Kamienic Podolsk, Podolski, in Ołyka nearby Łódzk, uh, in Kuty, but also we are, we are developing projects in, uh, in, in Latvia, uh, in, in France. So right now we are one of the uh, most important institutions, uh, non-governmental institutions supporting the Polish heritage abroad. We are, active, uh, we are active also in Poland. Uh, we are supporting uh, renovation of uh, uh, Tata cemeteries in the eastern Poland, in Studzianka, Zastawek this year, hopefully Bochoniki. And but our largest project is in Warsaw. It takes place on the Warsaw Jewish Cemetery, where there are more than 90,000 existing Jewish tombstones, which makes it the largest collection of uh, Jewish tombstone existing Jewish tombstone in Europe. Sounds amazing. It's a, and tell me, please, uh, how it, what was the most difficult at the very beginning? Because I understand it's kind of developed naturally. It wasn't pushed by any other institution, but you and your friend, and then you start gathering other friends, other students, other people. And how, how, it, how did you allow it to grow so big? At the early beginning, there were only two of us. We, we, we decided that we are able to possess some grants to, partic to participate in uh, grant programs of Ministry of Culture and for, uh, National Heritage. Later on, we started to possess some money from the other sources, like uh, Polish Senate, like Ministry of Foreign Affairs, like private donators. And uh, uh, our projects were larger and larger. And right now, right now we are working in the the biggest uh, Polish project uh, abroad, uh, Polish cultural project abroad, uh, in, uh, for example, in the uh, Wojciechowski Cemetery. Wojciechowski Cemetery. It's the uh, it's largest uh, renovation process all over the world taken by the public uh, government, uh, governmental funds. So we are restoring the more, we restored the more than 100 tombstones. Uh, tombstones uh, of not only uh, graves of important, important uh, uh, people, important uh, artists, politicians, soldiers, but also very uh, valuable uh, masterpieces, uh, pieces of, uh, of architecture, pieces of, of art. It's, uh, when we started th that project, we had only five tombstones renovated each year. Right now it's at least, uh, at least you know, not, not less than, than, than 10, sometimes even 20. It's the only one existing uh, veteran, uh, veteran uh, quartier 
uh, of uh, the November uprisers existing in the world. So it's impressive that it's still existing in Lviv. That's why we decided to renovate it. All those projects are absolutely amazing and you save those pieces of architecture from we basically being we destroyed. <laughs> Congratulations for this. And hopefully you, viewers of Poland Daily Culture, also understand the importance of such renovations and to keep those monuments and those tombstones alive. And thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture. For Poland, the 19th century was a century of struggle for independence, and thus, a century which for Poles did not end until the 11th of November 1918, when a new, independent Poland emerged from the ashes of the First World War. This is the story of how the 1905 revolution led, as though the 1813-1863 had not, to independence and of the emergence of Józef Pilsudski as the leader of a reborn Poland. For Poland, the 19th century was a century of struggle for independence, and thus a century which for Poles did not end until the 11th of November 1918 when a new, independent Poland emerged from the ashes of the First World War. This is the story of how the 1905 revolution led, as those of 1830 and 1863 had not, to independence and of the emergence of Józef Pilsudski as the leader of a reborn Poland. Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And we're continuing our series of looking at all things rebellious and revolutionary. We started with the 1830 revolution in Poland, the uprising. We then went on to the 1863 uprising. And now we're going to start with the 1905 uh, revolution in Russia, which led on to a series of events, ultimately, at the end of the First World War, seeing the re-emergence of Poland as an independent country. And I'm joined in the studio by our resident expert, Dominic Stenchny Kostanetsky. Dominic, welcome. How would, would we say that developed from 1906, 1907, when the sort of immediate revolutionary activity tended to die down? What, were the, what, what, what happened next? If in, in, I may, I will, course, I, yes. will, I, will, uh, I will try to sum up those, um, those political parties. So we've got the loyalists, we've got the National Democrats, we've got Piłsudski and his socialists. And we have to understand it correctly because socialism, I mean, it's something that we, um, uh, that we uh, associate very, very badly because socialism, it's like uh, one step before communism. Uh, here, nothing of the sort. I mean, Piłsudski said once, that he quit the red streetcar, that is to say communism. I quit the red streetcar at a stop named independence. Right. And that's uh, that's, um, that's uh, Piłsudski's creed. So we start uh, with a uh, fight for social rights, but it's only a means. A means to an end. A means to an end for the communists. And that's the fourth uh, a political party at that time for the communists. Uh, who started with socialists at, at one point in, uh, let's say, 18, uh, 1893. It was the same party, but it soon turned out that the wings were so, I mean, pushing in, in different directions, so they had to split. And this revolution of 1905, 1906, besides being a general rehearsal before regaining independence, was also uh, a, a chance to regroup you know, um, uh, uh, fractions, uh, uh, political parties. And, and, and can we say much about the attitude of sort of major land landowners, um, the sort of uh, what was happening in the in the, in the Belarusian and, and, U and Ukrainian territories at the time? Uh, these uh, uh, land um, uh, owners, of course, uh, would uh, uh, um, remain careful. Uh, so. Uh, Oh, it was them who would uh, uh, call um, um, uh, very often um, um, Piłsudski uh, a bandit, uh, a bandit from Rogów. And now we have to say what is Rogów, what, what is, why Piłsudski is called bandyta z Rogowa, z Podrogowa. Um, 
this uh, revolutionary uh, socialist party led by Piłsudski, PPS, Polska Partia Socjalistyczna, Polish Socialist Party, had its own, let's say, yeah, yeah, um, uh, a, a terrorist group. I mean, hitmen who would attack uh, the, 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 the tsarism on, 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 on different fronts. Uh, so, for example, they would attack um, 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 uh, the police um, uh, in many places. But, of course, what was very important, and which is also very important, apart from ideals in every revolution, is money. And the, 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 the thing um, that um, uh, PPS, Polska Partia Socialistyczna, lacked was money. And uh, so that's why they, uh, they organized, um, they launched uh, these expropriation um, uh, and actions. And against... at one point Bill says his brother attack a train where they, 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 there was some money on a train. That is Rogów. Yes, that, that is Rogów. That is Rogów. Uh, with, with Lenin, was it with Lenin's brother as well? I think. I no, think no, I... no. That's a, that, that's a different story. Different, no, no. The, the, different story. Le, uh, Lenin's brother wasn't involved in this. Uh, but uh, uh, earlier on, uh, before uh, uh, before um, uh, being sent to Siberia, at some point, Piłsudski was sent to Siberia uh, for uh, no for his uh, for his illegal actions. But that was in the uh, 80s, 90s of the 19th century. So. Slightly earlier. Slightly earlier. So let, let's drop it, if you yeah, no, no, of if, course, if, yes, if, yes, if yes. we may. Um, uh, 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 um, at some point, uh, there, there, there was a Russian train carrying money, some 30,000 rubles. Remember? Uh, Rub uh, yes. Uh, Lublin, Zizin, Heidenreich, Krug, very similar thing, uh, with this slight difference that here we've got an attack on, 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 on a train that, uh, in, in November 1906. And uh, this money um, fell into into Polish hands. Uh, at some point, Piłsudski was was bluffing that he would uh, um, uh, because the the, the 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 Russian soldiers didn't want to open the door, and he said that he's got a bomb in his hand, and he's counting to ten, and he will drop the bomb, and he didn't have nothing in his <laughs> anything in his hand. But that was a bluff, and but the Russians and that that was Piłsudski. I mean, Piłsudski was a, was quite a guy. Yes. I mean, he was um, uh, he, he 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 was married to one of the most beautiful uh, women at that time in the Polish in the Polish kingdom, who. Uh, it will spice up our story. Who was once a fiancé to Dmoski? Ah. ah! Now, do you think that had any influence over it the, might. Sort of the animosity between? I mean, them? It, historians have to be very careful. Of course, because. Uh, in, but it might, uh, it might have some, some, some impact. I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, who wouldn't prefer Piłsudski, who was a handsome guy, you know, with a, um, with a flash in his eye and and, and a gun in his um, in his pocket? Uh, who wouldn't prefer him to Dmoski, who was a dull intellectual, you know, looking yes. like this? Um, I mean, it's it's obvious that uh, you know women um, loved Piłsudski, and he was loved by women. Um, again, we have this parallel with with Prince Joseph Poniatowski. I mean, it's, as, as you said once very uh, very nicely, that uh, history, even if it doesn't repeat, it often rhymes. In, uh, indeed, so indeed. I, 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 I can't claim it as my own. I, I can't. No, no, but uh, it, but was, it is. A, it, I think it was either Kipling or somebody very eminent said mm -hmm. that. Of course, it is something worth bearing in mind because it is so often, mm -hmm. so often the case. In fact. Um, but but yes, so Pilsudski was this very colourful figure, um, and and well, so so what happened? What happened next in our story? You know, we we the, the sort of the immediate uh, revolutionary fervour slightly quells. The, the Russians have a new constitution, although it's obviously just biding the time. Yeah, the, the and, revolution until the nineteen seventeen revolution. But of course, then we have this. I think this general belief of this general feeling that some sort of European war um, was probably in the offing. Mm. Um, that's an old. That, that's an old story. In 1830s, so way back, way back, uh, Adam Mickiewicz wrote in one of his, his writings, um, "God, we beg you for a European war." Many Polish patriots, and that in fact that was it turned out to be correct. I mean that that, that this type of thinking turned out to be correct. Uh, uh, thought that uh, the only way to regain independence uh, is to have a major European conflict in which um, 
the three partitioning powers will fight uh, one another. And that's exactly what happened in 1914. Some say that Piłsudski, even before the war, because during the war or after the war, huh, that was obvious, but that even before the war, Piłsudski said once uh, to one of, of his... Uh, um, to one of his friends, uh, that that would be that that would be exactly the outcome of the first world war so that germany will win the war in the east and austria hungary in the east but they will lose the war in the west so in fact we've got this beautiful political constellation where all the free partitioning powers lost the war and it gave room gave space for an independent poland Hey, Glenn, this is, uh, oh wait, this is Glenn. I'm Will, and welcome to Poland Daily Travel. We're here on Piwna Street. What does that mean? Beer Street. Beer Street in Gdansk, the beautiful town of Gdansk. It's an amazing place. As you can see, look behind us. What a building. This is ASP, which is the uh, Visual Arts uh, Academy. Yeah. And it used to be in history, this was Zbrojovnia, which I think would be in English, um, armory? Armory. Is yes. it armory? I think yeah. so. So it used to be an armory and now it is an amazing art school. Can you imagine if you, wouldn't it be cool if you got to go and do your art there? That was where you went? It's like a temple of I uh, could be a, a, nude, a nude model. <laughs> you could be a nude model. It wouldn't be the first time. But it's like... From 1605. What an amazing building. Yes, yeah, Renovated in 1768. It says right there, 1605. Yeah, yeah. Very good. In 1758 which to us is chump change. It means nothing. That's just yesterday to I was us. a wee tyke. Yeah. Let me tell you, let me ask them. The, uh, what is, why do they, they call it Beer Street, but uh, is that because there's a lot of beer here, or is that an idle bus? I wonder if this is really the big pub street in, in Old Town. This is where the pubs uh -huh. are. The clubs would be somewhere else as far as nightlife goes. Well, but we're the, gonna a see lot of the later, pubs maybe. are here. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a coincidence or because of the geography or uh -huh. just because they thought it'd be a good place to have a pub. I don't know. You don't know, but, it, but they, I mean, traditionally, the, 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 the beer halls were here. Yeah. I mean, because it could dance, let's face it. It's got a German, it's got a German, German and Polish, Polish feel. German, it's Polish, mixed. and a little bit of Holland. Swedish or? A little bit of Dutch. Holland. And the Hanseatic yeah. League, yes, all of them. Hanseatic the, League. Yeah, so the whole, you know, area like with uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, yeah. Denmark, Northern Germany, right? Yeah. Hamburg. Hamburg was a Hanseatic? Yeah. And there's uh, uh, Tallinn uh, and... Kaliningrad. Did you say? Kaliningrad. Yeah. No, let's not call it that. Let's call it Konigsberg. Much Konigsberg. nicer name, isn't okay. it? The King's... I call it... Berg. Kingtown. Kingtown. It's Kingtown because, like, Kingston, yeah. yeah. But, Kingston, uh, there you go. It's like Kingston, right. Ah, that's good, yeah. But le the, the thing is, though, that the, uh, the, the Russians came over there and they just said, oh, we'll have that. It had they nothing needed, to do with Russia. They needed a port. They needed a port, of course. Uh, where it wouldn't yeah. freeze over. Yeah, because it's just over there. I think it's that direction, isn't it? Not far. So it's called, uh, there's a name for that. It's the, when you take, have a little piece on the side, what's that word? Do you remember that word? Mm. Uh, not an annex, but there's some word for that. Uh, like uh, annex. An annex, yeah, a little, yeah. yeah a, a little. Uh, enclave. Yeah, enclave. Yeah, it's a kind of an enclave. Yeah, full of tanks, at any rate. Um, you sounds a bit scary. You can take a, a ferry from here, mm -hmm. uh, pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. It's one good little side trip. Oh yeah, you can take a ferry. Where do you get the ferry if you want to go to see the Russian, our Russian friends? Uh, I think that's not, they keep changing it. I think it's in Newport. It's up to you, Newport, Newport. Yeah? Novyport. The Newport. It's a neighborhood of yeah. Gdansk close to, on the north side, close to... Oh, you were doing the Frank Sinatra thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like that. That's good. So it's yeah. the north side of town. Yeah. Uh, towards, you know, all the different neighborhoods where all the blocks are, towards Sopor and Gdynia. Uh-huh. It's north side where you find the old, uh, where Lech Fuenza, uh did the, the stuff when communism the was falling. Solidarity stuff. The, 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 uh, the shipyards, right? Yeah, the Stolch, shipyards. Yeah. I mean, the, the port, the shipyards are, uh, you know, a central 
part of the history. And that's the big yeah. place to go for the big parties now. When there's big events, mm -hmm. like some ba huge band comes from the West or something, very often it'll be in one of the clubs in the shipyards. Is that right? Yeah, well, who would know better than yourself? It's the big There's open area with saying. big buildings. Yeah. You know, a lot of towns yeah. in Europe have this where their old, their old uh, uh, factories are turned into big uh, party uh, venues, uh -huh. like in Berlin and so on. Yeah. Oh, sure. So it's, it's doing the same sort so, of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's happening here, and yeah. it's, it's a very interesting to witness it, you know, blooming. Absolutely, I can imagine. You know, I was just thinking about some places you can go when we're doing this show, we can go and just spend a day and we can do it, you know, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it depends on how you want to do it, but we can At the really moment, cover a lot we're at dusk and we're walking down Pivna and we're close to Mariatska, the biggest brick church in Europe. Oh, let's go see it. Come on. Mariatska. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Bumper! I think we're after a bumper. The bumper just happened. You were before the bumper. The Poland Daily Travel bumper, Glenn, Glenn, before yeah. the, the bumper just went, you were talking about this church. Now, you were saying something interesting. Yeah, the see. biggest church or? Yeah, this is like, I think brick? the biggest brick made church in Europe, I think is what I understood. It is I huge. think I've heard that. If you yeah. try to go up to the top, you're gonna, it's gonna be half a day at our age. Take us half a day to do that. Take us half a day. I'm not going up there without a, somebody to have to carry me. You need the help gotta, of the I Lord. Need, I need a fireman to do a fireman carry. Or maybe if you pray for the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe he'll get you up there. I, I reckon he probably could. Yeah. If anybody could do it, Jesus could do it, yeah. for sure. Now, do you know how high it is? Uh, it looks no, like about 100 meters I, I or I don't something. remember numbers. It's massive, isn't it? I'm not yeah. a number rememberer. Yeah, and what's the name of the church again? Mariatska. 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 And it's the uh, cathedral, right? Yeah, that's the, the main one. It's the main one for yeah. Gdansk. God, I mean, how, well, it must be. Yeah, at that because, size. <laughs> could there be a, a bigger one than that? I love the street. If we just stand here and look at this street, it's worth taking a walk back, isn't it, from this perspective. We got the nice light coming at the end of the day here. Gosh, we had rain on the road trip. Uh -huh. Yeah, we had terrible rain. And uh, I felt like, I felt like uh, Trump. We had terrible rain, let me tell you. It was really bad. It was rain. It was the best rain. It was the worst rain, actually. I know rain that better way, than anybody. <laughs> I know rain better than anybody. anybody. Yeah. We both know rain better than anybody. Even but, when I lived in the desert, I knew rain better yeah, than anybody. That's right. That's right. So this street is a good place to start, you know, for the first beer. Or yeah. after, after dinner, maybe. Yeah. We'll come over here and have a beer, I think. The boys, the boys are going to want some beer. They've worked hard today. Yusuf Ka, Yusuf Ka moved here from Sopot, a great place, like a, like an old library inside. It's very yeah. close. What's jazz, that? jazz concerts and jam sessions. Oh, let's look here. It's on the corner. What a great this building. This is seven eight. We're just. This is a great building. This is stamp collecting house. This is the stamp collecting house. Wow, a lot of cool little museums in this town. That's this is amazing. Stamp this is a museum, right? I guess so. It's the it's it, stamp you know, collector. It, it says philatelistica, which means stamp collecting. Yeah. Yeah, these stamp collecting, right. That's amazing. Super. Poland Daily Travel in Gdansk. We're having fun with Glenn Meyer. He's a good man. Lots of gold records. <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. And he's guiding us. <laughs> and geographer. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next thrilling episode. You can also, also mention that uh, my degree is in geography. We could also mention that his degree is in geography. <laughs>